driving a Mini Cooper with the top down and the bang of fucking jazz cigarettes out of that car is unbelievable. Coast Road heading towards Hout. It's one of those roads I am most glad of a motorbike on. I just cannot fucking imagine why everybody in Dublin tries to go here whenever it's in any way sunny or nice. It's just like, let's go to Hout. Let's go there on Sunday afternoon. Hout and fucking Glendalough. <laughs> it's like, let's go somewhere outside Dublin. What places do we know that are outside of Dublin? Well, I know that Glendalough exists and that's basically it. That's the full list. And uh, I don't really do road rage videos. How could you when you're doing this to fucking traffic on your motor bicycle? Um, no, but I am doing <laughs> a sort of a funny take on road rage videos. And uh, I don't think, uh, I think I had one video back when I sort of mentioned the current pandemic situation. And uh, this week in Ireland, the situation is like, cases are on the rise and the government have sort of said oh well we won't we won't hesitate in locking Dublin down and uh, I wanted to go out because I've I, you know this is probably boring to some people who are regular viewers because this is one of my regular loops that I do around how the Malahide and I wanted to go out with a special sort of view to looking at how people are observing the rules such as they are be it about masks or be it about um, keeping two meters apart or whatever other rules we've thought of. So let's go have a look and see how people are doing, see how annoyed I am, because I really don't feel like being locked down again. So yeah, here's some people already doing a bicycle. That's grand, probably don't need a mask. I had heard earlier on in this that like your chances of catching it if you're going out for a cycle or a run or a walk or if you're just walking around in a park was slim and none right? because you really need somebody to be coughing or breathing directly on you and for you to stick around you know so unless somebody coughs on something you know that you later put in your mouth it's generally going to be okay so for the most part I think if I think, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I think if you, if, or if you have an open top car like those ladies had, um, that you're going to be okay, like unless you're in very close proximity with somebody who's like, eh, how's it going? <coughs> so maximum points so far, people are doing okay. I've actually seen a lot of people, or a few people, driving around with a mask on, and I'm just kind of going, hmm, unless you're picking up people you don't know. I think you'd be okay with your mask on, unless people are just putting it on and leaving it on for the day. If they found one comfortable enough to do that, in which case, fair play. Okay, people walking around. And again, if you're walking down a street, that's a fairly big street. You know, is it okay to walk down a street with a mask on? I'd say it's probably grand. You know, again... You're not fucking, you know, a street like this, it's not a big occupied street. There's not people coming in and out of places. You're generally probably grand, right? You know, in terms of, if you think about it, like a mask isn't going to protect you 100% anyway. So all you're really doing is playing the numbers. Like, all, all you're really doing is making sure that you're, d you're doing the precautions that you can. Like, you're not walking around in a hazmat suit, so you're not going to you're not gonna 100% protect yourself, but it's to do with people just making a fucking effort. And uh, yeah, one of the things I, just looking at those four lads, unless they're four brothers from the same house, uh, one thing I do notice is that like, groups of kids walking around, they don't, kids don't appear to give a bollocks about it, like, because again, they're kids. Like they're, they're fucking, you know, <laughs> if you're fucking 14 or 15 or 16, like you're not even a real fucking person yet. like. You're just doing what you're either what you're told to do or what is in, comes as an instinct to you. So, like, even if your parents are at home saying, "Oh yeah, you should wear your mask while you're out with your mates," like your parents aren't going to tell you don't go out with your mates because they want you out of fucking house. And then when you go out, like, if none of your mates are mates are wearing masks, you're not going to wear it. And like, 
the, the implications of that just don't occur to you. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that every single 16-year-old on the planet is a stupid sociopath. Far from it. But, uh, <laughs> like, chances are there's more of a chance that you're not thinking with all of your faculties because you haven't developed them yet. So I do see a ton of groups of kids out, you know, on bikes or walking around, and they're going to spread it. Like, they just are. And that's the fucking difficult question about it, is do you let them out, right? Or do you, and, and <laughs> as in, do you as a government decide, you know, oh, we're going to let kids out to do what they want? And then, as a government, if you decide that you're not going to let them out, is that actually going to work? You know, are they going to obey? You know, and are you going to be able to police that at all, right? And I'd imagine with government, it's the case of you're relying on a certain percentage of people to obey, to do as they're told, right? And to the extent that people do that, then, you know, you're, you're automatically ahead. So you could sort of say it's pointless to tell people to stay within two kilometers of their house because they're not going to, but I think a, a significant percentage are going to. And that's, because uh, they just are, right? It's just, it's, it's their personality, it's whatever it is. It's not because they're stupid people. In fact, it, it, often, it often is the case that they're smart people because they look at the information available to them and say, yeah, that's actually not a bad plan. Um, and if nothing else, what the initial lockdown did for people is that it gave them the air cover, if you like. You know, I was looking at the... Uh, the numbers coming out of things in in March or April, and I think I said something about this in a in a previous video. But like, I was like, Jesus, uh, I hope you know, I hope people who generally wouldn't be allowed to stay at home from work are going to be allowed to, either by you know a larger scale set of rules being passed down, or for or by it becoming normal. And it turns out that will happen. That's what happened, and so. That all seems to be getting rolled back now, and what you're seeing at the moment is like people who, you know, I know a lot of people who are still inside, who haven't come out of lockdown yet, you know, because they don't have to, and so they're making that choice not to, because from what I have heard, it's, uh, <laughs> I think we've established at this point, it's not just the flu, it can have long-running um, complications and side effects, and we don't understand what they are yet. And so, given a choice between rolling the dice and not rolling the dice, if you can aff afford to, or you're, you have the privilege of being able to not roll the dice, then that's it. All right? You know, you're not going to. And so I'm somewhere in the middle, I think. I'm, I, you know, if I really, really wanted to, given my job and the missus' job and other stuff that goes on, like we could not leave the house until next year. It wouldn't be a bother to us, logistically, in terms of whether we'd go fucking bananas or not. That's a whole thing. And so you take a risk when you go out. You know, it might be a small risk. It might be a calculated risk, but you take a risk nonetheless. Like even me going out on the bike here, you know, I'm taking a risk, you know. Uh, not so much of coronavirus, but also just the fucking crashing or getting hit by a car or whatever it is. Like every time you go out, you take a fucking risk, right? And so it's why I said earlier on, I'm not doing a road rage video of, of like, you should be wearing a mask, because that's kind of not useful either. If you go into a room full of people and say, oh, you fuckers should be wearing masks, chances are a significant percentage of people in that room will say, well, I'm not fucking wearing one now. You know, like, I'm, uh, you know, people hate doing what they're told. The science appears clear. They do help, you know, staying inside helps, you know, wearing a mask helps. You know, getting tested and quarantining yourself if you feel you've been exposed helps. Everything helps, um, but there's no way of... There's no path forward aside from if things go off the fucking rails to, again, do the lockdown things. Which we did with Kildare a couple of weeks ago, and we may end up doing with Dublin. And I think as we go into the winter, we're probably going to go back into some more broad lockdown again. That's my prediction. And I've never been incorrect before. It's one of those fucking sneaky class days out. Like it's 24 degrees and it's sunny and it's fucking, it's just a random Sunday in between other sort of not, not amazing days. So that's, 
that's a thing. It's like it's getting later in September now, second half of September technically. And I always tend to forget that the weather only really gets shit in Ireland in January. <laughs> you know, people sort of go, oh, fucking getting close to Halloween, time to put the bike away. No, it's not time to put the bike away. Well, it's actually technically never time to put the bike away, but I wouldn't be putting my, if I were a bike, bike putter away, or I wouldn't be putting my bike away before Christmas. Anyway, here's a big group of people standing a foot apart. Oh, no, they're standing, they're standing two metres apart. They've got their masks on. That's one thing as well that changed from a couple of months ago is that shops are actually making you put on a mask now. Whereas previously it was like, yeah, you can put on a mask if you want, like, but you don't have to, and that's kind of pointless. And so we're getting then into a slightly more occupied part of civilization. Group of chung ones, no masks. And if you look at the big crowds, the big crowds actually look fairly spread out. It's one of those things where it's weird, where it's not even because people are, like, strictly doing as they're told. You know, it's like uh, people just have this in the back of their minds. It's like, oh, stay away from people. I'm wondering how long that'll last after, well, if we get a vaccine and it's all that. If people will still sort of go out and go, oh, I need to instinctively stay away from other people. Because that'd be class. Fucking hate other people. I want them to stay away. Okay, big group of lads waiting for fucking chips. Not a fucking mask to be seen. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's a chips thing. People who like like chips and are lining up for chips are just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not wearing a mask lining for chips. I'm lining up for chips, like... This is fucking... <laughs> Maybe if they were lining up for something good for you to be wearing masks. I'm lining up for quinoa and falafel wraps. I'm wearing my mask. I remember fucking five years ago when nobody knew about bikes. Like, there was no bikes. Everyone was like, I'm fucking... I don't have a pot to piss in. I can't afford a bike. Now everyone can afford a bike. It's class. I mean, it's still expensive. It's just everyone can afford it now. Come on, come on to fuck. Yeah, not a lot of masks going on. All the masks seem to be, and a guard walking around, don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't give a fuck if I was a guard. If, if as a guard you're given this job that is just so insurmountable, it's like, go out and make sure people are doing social distancing and wearing masks. Like, how, how can you do that? You can't, you can't do it, like... Because you go out to somewhere like Hout and you see a big bunch of fucking 50 people standing there waiting for chips outside of Beshoff's. Like, what are you going to do? Now, you're a fucking guard, so you signed up for giving out to people. So you're going to go and give out to them. But then you go off and you come back in half an hour and it's the same thing. You know? And it's... Uh, it's not frustrating to me because I'm not standing outside Beshoff's waiting for chips. But, like, it's... Um, it's one of those things where I think peop the urgency is worn off for a lot of people. You know, people were like, oh, this is bad. It can kill It can kill you. It can kill your, your elderly relatives, all that sort of stuff. And then it got a bit sunny, you know. And then we relaxed the things a little bit. And then a lot of people said, yeah, do you know what? I'll take my chances. You know, they didn't say, oh, this is a, a relaxing of the rules that we can be judicious about. They said, no, it's time for you to make your own decisions and take your chances. The government are letting you do this, so clearly you're entitled to do it, so you should do it. It's, it's safe. And so, if something is legal, it doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. I would say we're probably due another, another injection of manners into the, the general Dublin area. Be it a couple of weeks of Lockie Downey or uh, something else going on, I don't know. But that seems to be the only blunt instrument available at the moment. Fucking trains. I think they own the road. Alright. Coming into Malahide, which is, I don't know, I guess data point number two in my very thorough look at how people are doing with masks and social distancing. Random coffee van. I will say there's a lot more fucking grub vans around 
which I don't know poses its own challenge. There's a you know, I'm just seeing a lot more of them. Are you seeing a lot more of them? Let me know in the comments. God, I hate constantly doing that. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, Malahide. And now I'll no I'll note, I guess that both places, Hotel Malahide, I'm going to are a kind of touristy on the weekends. You know, a lot of people take the train out here, so there's a lot of people. And B, uh, you know, on a regular day, are you know moderately posh, moderately posh areas. I don't know, is Malahide posh? Answers on, on a postcard. Answers on a postcard. Unless you're from Malahide. In which, you, in which case you can fucking go fuck a dowager, Fauntleroy. Be at a beach and the, the bits there seem fairly distancey. I don't know if it's more or less distancey than it generally would be. It's not the kind of thing you looked about looked at before. Is everyone keeping their distance? There is a food truck in someone's front garden. Fantastic, love it. No sign of any masks, so that's not great. Another ice cream van. Can't see who's there. See if there's masks, see if I can police them. That is a serious concentration of ice cream vans along this stretch, which is fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, I'm still here, even if you look at me. This is one of those walk in into traffic and hope for the best type people. I don't know if I've just run into a pocket of them, but it seems to be a much older crowd in Malahide. I have, since I got into Malahide town, since I'm going to call this Malahide town, I have seen no masks whatsoever. Although they are still kind of walking around outside, but yeah. There you are, on your phone. He actually has the phone like out the window, just in case you weren't sure he was on his phone in his car. 27 degrees, fucking hell. It's nearly fucking nipple vent weather. Yeah. All right, I just spotted my first mask and I'm already much of the way through the town. Yeah, that is not an amazing sign when you have to when you're already through the town centre before you see any kind of mask and the place is pretty packed. So, hmm, hmm. That's my professional assessment. That's as professional as my assessment gets. Hmm. And so, in a week or two's time, when Dublin is locked down and people were like, "Oh, but we were all doing the things," yes, fucking weren't, lads. <laughs> For the most part, you kind of weren't. And I think people are kind of mistaking allowed with safe. You know, just because something's allowed doesn't mean it's safe. And again, I'm no fucking angel. I've been going out and doing things I don't necessarily need to do. I mean, you know, there's need to do and then there's want to do. And I've been going out doing things I want to do as opposed to need to do. Even though we're still kind of in a ropey situation, so... This isn't me being preachy, or I hope it isn't me being preachy about it, but uh, yeah, I think on balance, yeah, there is kind of a danger that we kind of lost the run of ourselves a little bit. And if we go back into a, maybe even just a Dublin specific lockdown, since it seems half of cases roughly are here anyway, that it might not be a terrible thing. If it saves a few lives, it'll probably end up being worth it. I guess, as well, given the actual numbers for seeing 200 new diagnosed cases and when we a day, and when you think about those 200 cases, those are people who have actually gone to their doctor and said, hello, how's it going? I'd like a test. And then they go take the test, and then the test says uh, positive. And 100 of those are in Dublin every day. And so when you think about a city the size of Dublin, like... I just rode through Hoth and Malahide and chances are there's probably a couple of dozen people there walking around with COVID. Like, just by that they're two busy towns in Dublin. And there's a lot of people there. You know, I probably passed by tens of thousands of people there. Or 10,000 people, let's say. You know. 
and uh, I'm sure somebody could do the maths to figure out the prob 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 probabilities but like the probability of there being somebody walking around Hotel Malahoy today with COVID is 100% like it's fucking close enough to 100% to a statistical fucking something something somebody else do the maths but I would say if I were a betting person and we could somehow verify it I'd say there's at least a dozen people walking around Hotel Malahoy with the COVID every every day like this on a weekend when it's nice and uh, so are you taking that chance uh, well I, I'm not I'm on a bike I'm just fucking pissing through the town with my fucking helmet on and no no fucking germs are getting in near me but um, would I go down to fucking Hout or down to the seafront there in Malahide and Rock up to one of those ice cream vans and say, "Give us an ice cream out of your hand, there, please, Mister Ice Cream Van Man." I would not. Uh, I I don't wanna. I don't wanna roll that dice, and that's a pretty good way of rolling that dice. And it's real unfortunate, but if uh, if how to Malahide need to be quiet for a couple of weeks, so be it. You know, people are worth more than money, um, and that's. Uh, it's a tough call to make uh, and you can probably rely on Fianna Fáil to fuck it up but they might, you know a stop clock is right twice a day so maybe they will um, <laughs> unless the, the fucking ice cream man lobby gets to them and says you can't shut down ice cream, you'll regret this uh, and, they, and they just bottle it like they did with the Vintners but uh, we'll see, we'll see, here we go anywho that's me little loop done um, it's a bit sunnier today, so it's a little different from previously, <laughs> but uh, enjoy, leave a comment or a like or a subscribe or anything else you want to leave there, and uh, I shall talk to you again. Yeah, bikes get the fuck.